Well, it's, it's uh, great to be back in a game week here. I, I know uh, we utilize the bye week well. Um, you know, there's a piece to it that's healing up. There's a there's a piece to going out recruiting, and then you know, in between, you're you're continuing to try to build depth, sharpen skills, all those type of things um, with some young guys, some backups, probably in particular. So. Uh, Good to have the bye week behind us at the same time and, and on to another game week here. And I think, you know, uh, looking back at our Portland State um, game, you know, I think we felt uh, that was going to be a challenge, um, and it was in its own right. And I think, you know, we were forced into having to play a, um, a really good second half to, to pull away from them. And I think Portland State's got a good team, and that was – uh, that was that was the result, um, but it did test us that day, um, you know. And I think our guys responded in that second half. So, so moving forward out of the bye, we have Cal Poly. Um, Cal Poly is a team, you know, that has suffered three conference losses now. But you can see them as a as a program that's continuing to build from the ground up. Um, you know, Coach Wolf taking over from Coach Baldwin um, is part of that. Uh, Coach Wolf was on the staff. You know, they had a, a, a pretty extreme turnover as far as just uh, scheme, philosophy, all those things when Coach Baldwin took the, took the job. And, and that takes time, um, you know, and, and it, what you see is a, a group that keeps playing. Um, and they've had, a, they've had a tough stretch of opponents at the same time. So, you know, we're looking forward to this game on, on Saturday. Um, looking forward to be in front of our fans again, uh, you know, continuing to move along as far as what, what can we do each week to, to make ourselves a better team. And this would be a great opportunity to, to do that. So with that, I'll open it up. Um, is there any advantage in the long run? Is there any benefit to having a bye week in the, kind of at the midpoint season as opposed to later on? Yeah, you know, we've been week nine the last two years. Um, being week six, I think you could justify it either way. Uh, I think where we're at this year, it, it suited us better um, week six. You know, when you're you're going through a week where you don't play and you're, you're wanting guys to return to have one of those weeks be a, a week where you don't have a game, I think is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, and I think on the recruiting side, um, having it be early October as opposed to, you know, late October, early November, I think, I think it was more advantageous for us to have that week this week uh, on that side as well. So, you know, you make the best of it. You don't really determine when your bye week's going to be, but uh, I think for us this uh, was well-timed. Well, I think we're better uh, than we were in August. Um, you know, that's, you know, guys continuing to prove themselves. Um, you know, position groups within our team continuing to gain traction to uh, show improvement. Um, you know, and I think our, our depth hasn't been extremely tested at this point, but I do think it when it has been tested, it's, we've responded. Um, you know, I look offensively, um, you know, I think we still got plenty of things to to work through, but you know our old line's playing. I think really well. I think we've established a, a running back running game. Um, you know, I think uh, in the passing game, you know we've gotten some elements back, and we'll continue to as as the season goes on. Um, so I think we made some strides there. You know, defensively, um, you know we've talked a lot about our secondary. That was the unproven area, and I think that group has really come on. And I think our front sevens played. <laughs> Played really well, uh, special teams wise. You know, we haven't had the the return game show up a whole lot, but either as the other team, we've covered quite well. And, and I, I think through five games, I think Brendan's shown where he can be, you know, a, a real weapon. Um, you know, he's kicked off particularly well. He hasn't had to punt a whole lot. And, you know, and outside of that Weber game, he has plays kicked very well. So, yeah, I think we've made good progress. Uh, you know, whatever our expectations were. It doesn't really matter. I think you look at the progress we've made, and then you lay, lay out kind of what we need to continue to do moving forward. Tommy, so being back on the uh, depth chart, do you speak to Kyle? Yeah. Week? Yeah, and I, you know, slated him as or. I think he's 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 going to be available. You know what, what and how that looks like. I think will be a continued work in progress for this week. Um, he has made, you know, considerable progress just moving around, but. Uh, you know, getting the go-ahead to move around in, in the conditioning aspect, um, you know, I think that's something to be, there's something to be said for that because um, Tommy Mallott is a highly tuned uh, athlete when he's, when he's healthy and, and getting him kind of back to that, uh, that place, you know, as, you know, when you're immobile for a couple weeks, um, 
you know, that's that's the progress I guess we're continuing to make, but definitely available at this point. I, uh, may, I may have missed this, but I saw Scott Trey was on a, a scooter with a boot. Um, any uh, update on his injury over the last Yeah, uh, Scott Trey was non-surgical. Um, you know, we've had, um, you think about Lane, Lane Sumner, those injuries aren't too too far apart. Lane, you know, Lane has surgery, Scott Trey doesn't have to. Um, so, you, you know, he won't be available this week. I didn't list him. Um, I think there's potential in the weeks to come. Um, you know, Jacob Trimble would fall in that same boat. Um, similar type of injury, no surgery. Uh, availability in these next couple of weeks. We're hopeful for that. Oh, sorry, just that you mentioned Lane there. What's his timetable? Yeah, you know, I, I think these next couple of weeks will be when he turns the corner. Um, you know, and there's steps. Turning the corner is being able to first run and then start changing direction, um, you know, getting the, the go ahead for that. So I don't, as far as a particular game right now, I don't know what that looks like, but I think through the, through the next couple of weeks, um, he'll be taking some really good steps and, you know, I'm hopeful, um, you know, we turn the page into November uh, that he could be available then. And then um, seeing, seeing Taco catching passes, I guess what's his, what's his situation? Yeah, Taco's uh, um, he's he's moved along quite well. In particular, I think the last month, um, you know, he went uh, went through a stretch where it's it's pretty slow as far as your progress with a shoulder um, surgery like that. But I think as of late, I think it's really started to turn the corner. So availability will will be there, um, you know, and I it's it's right around the corner. But we're really trying to ramp him up as far as just the conditioning side of things more than anything. Well, he hasn't played the last couple games. I, I know, um, you know, he's uh, he's got a really good arm and, 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 and can be prolific on the passing side. Uh, they played Kelly the last couple games in his absence. Um, Kelly's got more mo mobility, so if Heward's available um, this week, I mean, they'll have a decision to make. I, you know, two different quarterbacks. I think they both have, you know, they have about the same number of attempts right now um, in the passing passing side. And I think Kelly, like I said, gives a little bit more. Uh, mobility, all those things. Um, I would suspect they would go back to Heward if he's available. Um, but, but yeah, I think he was uh, he was adapting. Then goes out that second quarter of the Portland State game, and, they, and he hasn't played since. Um, and I mean, adapting. He's this is the first time he's played really. You know, he hasn't he didn't play a lot at Washington, but it was highly touted. Obviously, um, comes from a long line of quarterbacks. You know, in his family. So there's there's definitely there's ability there um, in a, a competitive nature. I'm certain. Well, they like to throw it, obviously, a bunch more than they, they will run it. Uh, they, they do have, I think, very capable receivers, big um, big targets, um, a variety of them at the same time. Um, so they've spread it around. Um, you know, Last year they were a little bit more skewed towards Coleman. Um, he was one of the better receivers in the league. Um, you know, so right now their, their receptions are a little bit more spread out. But, you know, what you, what you do, you know, what you got to do is you got to get them in Certain passing situations, even though they pass as much as they do, and when when that's uh, when that time's there, we got to rush the passer. And, and you know, um, if we can hold the running game to um, to very little, you do that. You make them completely one-dimensional, and um, you know that's that's what we aim to do. But they are more than capable of uh, you know putting up yards and production in the passing game. Yeah. No, like he jumps out at you right away. Um, you know, really good length, athleticism, um, five sacks at this point. Uh, you know, you can see they're they're coming on uh, as far as personnel goes on defense. Uh, you know, I think they cover well at the corner position. Their linebackers are very active. Um, you know, they've uh, they mix up their fronts. Uh, you know, kind of based on what you do. You know, I would imagine we'll see a lot of guys down there like we typically do. Um, but no, they have uh, they have some guys they're starting to make. You know, I think, think some real progress, and even reading, you know, through Coach Wolf's, I think, uh, comments out of these last couple games, I, I would say their mindsets continuing to evolve in a positive manner. You know, and, and um, you know, credit to to him for uh, for that. I, you know, I think it's you know, it, when you when you turn over like they have, as far as scheme and, and roster and type of players and all that, that is a that is a long process, and I know. Coach Baldwin got it got it started, and, and 
Coach Wolf is, is taking it on, I think, because he believes that uh, you know, Cal Poly is a place that he can have similar success that he's had um, in his career before. Anything else in the room? Oh, oh I guess you called me. Um, Blake, excuse me, Blake Schmidt, he had that early TFL last, last week. I guess what do you see from him through these first five games? Yeah, real, real consistent play. I, I, I know we felt like Blake had a good year last year. Um, we felt like he could be more impactful, um, and he's done that. Um, he's, he's, you know, in, in those type of plays, getting into the backfield, um, wreaking havoc. I, I think that's what those interior positions need to be about. So he's maybe not just accumulating all kinds of stats, but he's really impacting the game. And, and, and that's, that's been there all year out of Blake. And, you know, I think Sebastian the same. So, you know, and I think getting Paul brought back in there is, is help because Paul has I think very similar ability to uh, Blake Schmidt at that nose guard position. So and then Blake Hale, you know, I think credit to Blake. He's uh, Blake Hale's hung in there through uh, a lot these first his first two years with us, and now, you know, I think reaping the benefits of just uh, patience and being a little healthier this go around. So, you know, we're getting there with that that interior um, grouping, but uh, Sebastian and Blake Schmidt certainly are leading it up. Well, I think it's all that's all you look at. I I, I know um, with the bye week, I think it even dials in a little bit more. Uh, you know, you just want to get back out and play. I think that's that's what the bye week kind of does to you. It's it's great to have the bye week, but by the middle of it, you just want to get back out and play whoever's coming your way. And it happens to be Cal Poly, and and I think our guys, you know, recognize that that. Uh, you know this team has has ability. They maybe maybe hasn't quite clicked, but uh, they have ability. And I think you know, looking at our la our last game, kind of the same conversation. Conversation. You know, Portland State had beat Cal Poly, but you know they would also lost a, a couple games. So you can't you can't get caught up in the scores and all that kind of stuff. And you certainly can't uh, get caught looking looking ahead weeks down the road. I know that much. Victor, you have anything? Yeah, uh, you know, really uh, moved moved in well to that position. I felt like, you know, in hiring him, we had a guy that had been in the program um, a couple years, had uh, certainly seen how we want to do things uh, as far as, you know, just with our players on the field um, and then on the recruiting side, you know, knew, knew that, uh, you know, that he had a – had a real good way with young young kids as far as the young you know high school kids and, and getting to know them and really working hard and then being from the uh, the Seattle area, you know was excited about um, that that tie-in really being his first time as a full-time recruiter. So been really pleased with uh, his efforts on the field with that group communicating with them. I know anytime you're coaching a position like running back and, and one guy is out there at a time, you know the biggest thing is that you're. You're, te you're teaching them, obviously, but you're communicating where they're at, what they what they need to do better, but then what their expectations could be. So managing that uh, that group so far has been I, I've been really pleased. And on, like I said, on the recruiting side, I, I think what I expected um, has uh, has proven. You know, we'll we'll sign a group of guys down the road here in December, but um, you know, I think we've really done a good job in that Seattle footprint with with Sam taking the lead there. Uh, Brian Armstrong had that area. Um, you know, I, I think uh, you know Sam was a uh, was an off the field. So you know, a kid from Seattle comes in um, and you know spends time here on campus. That's when when Sam would have an opportunity to to be around him. So I, I think in that regard, he, he certainly did. I know uh, with with Junior Alexander, um, kind of same thing. Certainly a different story as far as his recruiting, but uh, you know Sam certainly helped in that manner and. You know, well, I think it'll be a, continue to be an area that's that's good for us. Yeah, I think I think the element uh, that you bring with with that starting skill set, I guess, is just I think the obvious would be on the on the the route side, the passing side, but. You know, I always believe, uh, 
you can coach, you can coach, you can move around position wise. Um, and I do think he had a real confidence in moving to that running back position, even though there's a, there's several things that we asked those two positions to, uh, that are very different. Um, so I think it helped um, in, in some regard, but I, you know, I, I just, I had a good feeling that, you know, that he could take over that room um, and, and continue to move it forward. And, you know, I, I feel like he's done that. Coulter, do you have anything? Well, you, we're not, ex you know, like we go through spring ball and fall camp. We're not exclusively in the gun or in pistol. You know, we, we work um, under center at times, uh, but certainly the volume grew. And I, I so, so to, your, to your question, I think, you know, Justice, um, perfectly fine with it. Um, and, you know, in, a, in some sense, I think snapping the ball to a guy under center takes a load off. Um, it's, it's, it is a, a more natural, uh, I think, skill for those guys, um, you know, just firing off the ball and all that. And then, you know, Sean had a, quite a wealth of experience from his time at Wyoming. And, you know, we've tried to build up Tommy's under center over time, too. He was primarily, um, almost exclusively, a, a gun guy at, at Butte High and, and really had been that so far in his career. So, you know, we don't want to just be limited to, you know, Sean's the only guy that will be under center. Um, but I do think, you know, it. Sometimes there's a real advantage to the running back, the way he gets the ball. Um, I, his vision can be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I think certainly the way the, the defense, um, the second level defenders in particular, view it and what they see. I think we can do a lot of the same things, not ask our linemen to do anything different, but then we can give the, um, you know, the defenders quite a bit different look. So, yeah, we'll continue to, to mix it in. But, uh, yeah, not this crazy departure. It wasn't like... You know, a couple of weeks ago, we said, you know what, we're going to completely sh shift gears here. It had been, been, been part of our fundamental base. Was there a moment that you realized that all the different Well, I think, uh, you know, we get to be in a little bit more of that outside zone combined with the, the naked, the getting out of pocket play action game. I think any any coach would say that that's a harder piece to defend. And then I, I know I think in particular when we looked at that Weber game plan, um, the things we did against them, you know, last year to get out on the edge. Um, how can we, in some ways, replicate it but make it look completely different to them? And I think that was probably that that transformational stage. And um, I know we joked a little bit about it with with the 49ers, but. I mean, you, you know, as a coach, you, you pay attention, um, you know, whether it's the 49ers, the Dolphins, probably in particular. I've, you know, watched the Bills. They're under center a bunch more now. So, you know, I think it makes you just think about things, rethink some things, um, you know, and wanting to build more of a down the field play action game. Um, you want to be able to draw the def defense up. I mean, the, the sec you know, that second and third level defender. So I think it all goes together. I don't know if there was any particular aha moment, but it's something when off season wise we had talked about and it's just, uh, you know, this was the time and kind of that Weber game was a kind of time and place to implement it. Yeah, yeah, we come off uh, that Northern Arizona win, um, which we, we obviously we squeaked out and it took everything. And yeah, we were we were a little banged up going out there. Um, you know, that was game 10 for us last year. No different than game six. You, you're still just trying to say, what can we do to keep getting better? You know, that point in time, um, you know, we would have been sitting on Eight, nine wins, I suppose nine wins, right? Um, eight, eight wins, I guess. Yeah, eight wins. So, you know, I think we felt like the playoffs were in front of us. We're a ways away from that right now. But that game, you know, everything kind of came together. I think we had 50-some points in the first first half. I know uh, big plays galore. Uh, Marquis obviously had the big game that day, um, and he ran ran wild. So, you know, I yeah, to your, to your point, I think our guys just responded well. Um, to that trip, to playing at night, um, and coming off a really emotional victory the week before. Yeah, 
Well, I, you know, we, I, we want to keep getting him involved. And, and unfortunately, we've seen some good kickers, so he hasn't got a lot of opportunity on the kick return side. So, you know, hopefully that, that there's some opportunities there. But offensively, I think here and there, um, small doses, we've gotten him the ball. I know we want to, you know, keep expanding that. Um, you know, him moving up to that one spot is really reflective of Trimble being out this week as much as anything. But he's always hanging there, whether it's uh, he's listed number one or not. He's a, he's obviously a weapon that we would like to utilize. And, um, you know, at the same time, he's not necessarily running back. He's not necessarily a receiver. He is a returner, but then on offense, what is he? I think he's just a guy that's got to get some touches. And, and you know, um, that hasn't happened a lot to this point. But I think as we move into the second half, we've got to continue to up that uh, that, that total. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I know we've talked about that before. Um, you know, opening games sometimes, but here you sit in the middle of the year with with anticip you know anticipation that the, the previous guy will be back, while the guy that's replaced him has had some relative success and is is quite a bit different. Um, you know, I, I think the mobility piece between the two is is certainly one thing. Um, you know, with Kelly, they they probably try to do some things that. Highlight that piece, and with with Heward, they're gonna, you know, have some more capability to to throw it down the field, I guess. So yeah, you you got to be ready for we got to be ready for both. And I, I think uh, you know it still comes back to okay, what do they do in the run game? That's primarily been running back oriented. Um, so what do we do to stop that? And then on the passing side, how do how do because um, it's you know it's about even with their attempts. How do they differ, and what does that look like? So you know, having a few extra days of practice to um, to expand what you work on um, is certainly to our advantage, uh, given this scenario. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't uh, necessarily say a whole lot, um, but but is a leader, and he's a leader with how he is, you know, continued to um, chase after what is a really high ceiling. You know, I, I think it was easy to see when he played in, in 21 that here's a guy that could really be special, um, and that doesn't always mean a guy is going to become special, and, and I think he's continued to take the steps um, in the off season to, uh, to chase that mark, and then, you know, I think with um, – with this consistency to this point, it's apparent on on all these Saturdays. You know he's been really dialed in because I think he knows that um, we have high expectations of him. Um, I, I know he knows that, and he's got a high standard that that he set for himself. And, and I think that piece, as much as anything, um, is such a, a, a fine example for for the rest of the guys in that room. Um, you know, just the work ethic. And then, you know, when Sebastian says something, you know, it, it's coming from a place that uh, he means what he says. You know, uh, I, I think that those type of leaders are very important to have on your team. Um, so, no, we need a big second half of the season from him. There's no doubt about it. But I know we've already talked about Blake Schmidt a little bit. But those two, those two getting in the backfield um, can light a fire as quickly as anything else on our defense. Yeah, I know. I think it's it's you know a continued battle with technique. You know, you're you you, you can't just go out there and, and see ball, get ball from a three technique, a defensive tackle position. You have to really be a technician, and I think that's been that's been something. You know, here's here's this really good to to great interior player, um, but our coaches are coaching him like he's a freshman as far as the technique goes. Both uh, Coach John Baptiste and Coach Howe. Um, you know, I think that's that constant message for that whole group. You know, uh, they're coaching Sebastian, Brody, and Blake and is every bit as hard as those guys that are in that next wave as far as just what what the technique is and then what it means to their level of success and what it means, you know, for them to be in the right gap. And, and, and that might not be on this particular play that I'm going to make a play, but someone else, someone else is. So a lot of credit to the two, two position coaches in that, that room. 
uh, of D linemen for just constantly harping on those guys, what the expectation is, what it's supposed to look like, and not letting them just go out there and play ball. I think that's a, that's a tendency for really talented players just to go out and play ball and try to make plays for himself. And that's, um, that's not what this defensive line is doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, it was clear to me a couple of years ago, um, probably in that first spring, that uh, that's that's the type of guy we need at that position. That that position in, in our defense is as important as as any other. Um, that guy being able to to do do things one on one at times, but then be able to just uh, probably attract as much attention as they they attract. Um, then that's then our defense is doing the things that uh, we needed to. So, you know, I, I really credit him for uh, for seeing that vision along with us coaches, um, continuing to get better, continuing to get bigger and stronger and more impressive physically, um, and then continue just to dial in, you know, on, on everything that he needs to do to become the very best he can before he walks out of here. And I, you know, I, I think we're on the right track. Yeah, I think so. I, I think um, I think they know what they want, um, and at the same time, we're living in the moment. I, I, I think there's such a key component there. Um, you get too far ahead of yourself with anything, you're going to get it sidetracked. Um, our guys have really been able to, to to live in the moment. We obviously talk about it a lot, but more just them demonstrating that on a daily basis and. You know, being able to go out there um, on a Tuesday last week in the bye week and really practice hard and then follow it up with a Wednesday. And, you know, I think that's that's a sign you're looking for. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, they understand every day matters, every rep matters in practice. Um, you know, and I think we got a big enough group of experienced guys that have been through quite a bit that, you know, they they see a younger guy that, that maybe isn't quite following suit. And I know not that we have this a lot, but... They're not afraid to make sure that's straightened out, um, so it's not just the coaches preaching that. So, you know, I think our our, our group of leaders, um, they are, they're living, you know, in the in the moment. They're demonstrating the way it's supposed to be done, and um, have have continued that all through the calendar year. Really, I think that's that's the biggest thing. This didn't just start when we got to the the, the football season. This goes back to this existence. I guess goes back to January. So, Aiden, how did you how'd you spend the bye week? Uh, just going to school and, and getting caught up with everything um, kind of in my life outside of football a little bit. Uh, getting everything caught up with school and just kind of sleeping as much as I could, just uh, recover and, and kind of take a, a little bit of a step back um, from the craziness that, that is the season. Uh, so that was kind of nice to have the little bit of stress off that week, but, yeah, that was about it. It's a nice to have the bye week just kind of, I guess, kind of at the midpoint in the season, almost kind of splitting it in two halves, if you will. Yeah, it, it has been nice. Um, in the past, we've had our bye week pretty late, and so it's it's a really, really long stretch before our bye week. Um, and so it was nice. I felt like it was needed. Um, it, was, it was very nice to have that in the middle um, to kind of separate into where now we can get into the mindset of um, getting ready to make this run towards the playoffs. So, yeah. What was it like um, having Ty back out there last game? Oh, it was great. Yeah, we love having Ty out there and uh, uh, just really happy for him that he was able to to overcome that, that injury and, and get back on the field. So, yeah, it was great. What's a, what, what kind of, I guess, what does he bring to this offense? What's his presence kind of mean? Yeah, Ty's a, a great leader for our group. Um, he's an experienced guy, a guy that, that likes to push everyone in our group. Um, and so just having him out there, I think it, it adds another level of intensity um, to us as receivers because uh, he's always pushing to be his best. And he's pushing everyone around him to be hit their best. So, yeah, it's... Um, I would say it, it kind of has everyone up their game when, when Ty's out there. So, yeah. What's it been like for you, you know, stepping up with some of the injuries and, and uh, seeing a lot of the field? What's it been like? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I um, mean, you know, I've, I've been here for a long time and, and worked really hard for, for any opportunity that I, that I could get. So um, it's, it's felt like a lot of hard work's paid off. Uh, but really just anything that I can do uh, to help the team is, is kind of my, uh, my whole mindset. So if they need me to step up and, and play in, 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 in a spot for a guy that has an injury, um, I'm more than willing to, to step in and do my part for, for the team. So, yeah. How are you guys 
guys preparing for Cal Poly, and I mean not looking too far ahead, given the human nature that Vikan's mentioned before of you know a team that hasn't won many games, something mm. like that. Yeah, I, I think we look at it as just another week. Um, we talk about every single game counting the same at the end of the season. Uh, so no matter uh, no matter what, this game's going to be in our record, um, and so we we don't treat it like any. Um, any different than any other game, so I think the the preparation is the same every single week for us. So yeah. What do you think of the parity of the Big Sky? You know, we're a few weeks in a conference play now. Some upsets. You know, the landscape. What, what, would, what would you say about it? Um, I think it's been interesting to see um, how some of the games have played out. Uh, kind of some teams that we we didn't we weren't sure about that have played really well, and some teams that we thought might have played better that haven't played as well. Um, and so yeah, I think it's been really interesting to see how some of those games have gone. Yeah. Um, I guess through the first five or so games, how would you evaluate the offense um, through this, this first stretch of the season? Uh, I think we've played well. I mean, there's always, the, uh, always things that we want to do better. Um, we're always pushing to try to be, be better throwing the ball and, um, and just trying to uh, get better at those kind of things every single day. Um, but I think that overall we've played well and, and we want to keep that going. So, yeah. What's it been like having Sean uh, run the offense with Tommy, with Tommy down? Um, for me, honestly, I don't really see it any differently with Sean back there uh, versus with Tommy. They both are very, very skilled guys that do a couple little things differently, um, but they both play pretty similar, I think. So um, I don't know if it's really been been very different for, for us at receiver, in, in my opinion. So, so uh, Sebastian, how did you spend the bye week? Uh, it was a good bye week. Uh, not a lot changed. We had a regular preparation week, and uh, we had like Friday off and Friday and Monday off, so that was pretty nice. And uh, yeah, it was a normal week, but it was pretty good. Yeah, um, do you, you kind of like it how it's, I guess, kind of splitting the season in half almost, if you will, kind of come in the middle of the season as opposed to maybe later on? Yeah, I think it's a perfect time to do a bye week and uh, really get us ready for next opponent. Give us, give us a buddy a, a little break, but I think more of the mental aspect of it. So yeah, it was pretty good timing for the bye week. How much growth have you seen uh, from the defensive line from last year compared to this year? Yeah, definitely a lot. Um, especially the communication side of things. Uh, last year, I know we wanted to communicate better and I feel like that's what we're doing this year. Um, as long as we're all right, we're all wrong and we're all on the same page. Um, what's, it, what's it been like going up against this, uh, this O-line in practice? Yeah, I, I think I've said this a couple times before, but I feel like they're one of the best O-lines in the FCS. So, I mean, going against, the, going against the best makes you the best. And at the end of the day, it's all love. I love those guys. Is there anybody in particular that's uh, especially difficult to go up against? Oh, for sure, Omar. Omar's probably the best offensive guard in the FCS, and uh, going against him really makes me better, so I appreciate him for that. Can you talk about the preparation for Cal Poly and staying locked in on the opponent this week when they haven't won too many games, the human nature of it all? Yeah, I mean, week by week, you've got to focus on your own opponent. You can't really take anything lightly. You can't take them lightly for sure. Um, they're a good team, they're disciplined, and they, they have new coaches, so they're a hungry team and they're young. Um, as long as you attack it week by week and really focus on that. Um, it's not hard at all to really stay focused because we know at hand what the end goal is. So, it's pretty. Uh, um, what was it like to just see him, I guess, make that kind of immediate impact, if you will? Right. I feel like uh, that's at the tone. I feel like Portland State saw that, uh, saw that counter and how Blake stopped it, and I think they stopped running it for a couple of plays. So uh, setting the tone that we're going to stop the run first play is pretty important, and uh, that was pretty pretty key factor in the game, honestly. Yeah, I mean, what's it, what's it like to have a guy like that? You know, that obviously um, you and Brody and Ben get a lot of attention, but he's kind of, I guess, flown under the radar a little yeah. bit. I guess how, how big has he been for you guys kind of in that interior? Oh, extremely big. I feel like he's doing a great job, and he's he's getting better every week, and uh, he's so disruptive, and he's, he's, a, he's a really good technician as well. He's smart. And uh, we're, we're, I'm glad he's on our side, so. What does it mean, uh, it's an off-topic question, what does it mean to be a Bobcat to you? What does it mean to be a Bobcat? Yeah. It just means to be a character, have accountability, be tough, and uh, honestly, just represent the state. That, that's kind of our acronym for CATS. And uh, yeah, I mean, being a Bobcat just means a lot. Um, how you uh, present yourself and how you act is really important, especially with this culture of football we have here at Montana State. As long as you buy yourself in and really trust the process, I mean, yeah. Can you talk about the defensive unit as a whole, the guys behind you, the linebackers, the secondary? You guys seem like such a unit yeah. out there. Um, what's it like as a whole, you know, game to game? Yeah, I mean, I'm, we're really close with each other. Um, 
you can have a, a lot of talent, but if you're not really close, it doesn't mean a lot. Um, we really, we really uh, get along well and we communicate well, and we all know like our job. And uh, as long as we do our one eleventh, everything will play out itself. There's, there's no selfish guys. There's no, no one trying to do anything special. We're all just doing our job at the hardest, the hardest we can, and uh, it all plays out. All good.